AMD has pretty much dominated the desktop CPU market, especially with the success of their Ryzen series desktop CPUs. The hype is real and people have been expecting the same great success from their mobile CPU side. Unfortunately, their Ryzen 7 3750H has not been a great success especially it couldn't even beat the Intel Core i5-9300H. Now, I will leave the AMD 4000 series mobile CPU to the end of this discussion. Let us just pretend that AMD has not released the 4000 series mobile CPUs. So that means the only way for us to enjoy the raw power of Ryzen on mobile is to use the actual desktop class CPUs inside a laptop chassis. Before we start pointing out that Linus Tech Tips has basically reviewed the same laptop with the 3950X. Yep, it is basically the same laptop and it is no surprise for us that manufacturers and brands have engaging with ODMs to make these laptops. Nonetheless, let us proceed with the review and these are the specs that we have received from level 51. The Forge 15R is designed to take on a desktop class AMD CPUs. Even though the maximum TDP has been limited to 65W, but there is still a lot of heat need to be handled off. The chassis is indeed quite thick at 32.5mm, but the weight at 2.7kg is surprisingly lightweight for a laptop of this caliber. Now of course, if you compare it with other TNA light systems, this is a thick boy. But then again, we have to know that MSI, they have GT Titan and ROG, they have their G700 and G800 series laptops. Those are really beefy laptops that requires you to bring two power bricks alongside with a power hungry laptop. Honestly, there isn't much to brag about the design itself, it's plain and simple. But one thing I really like is there are a lot of vents for air intake. Still, you might want to prop the laptop slightly upwards so that you can actually increase the airflow underneath the chassis. The 15.6 inch display has a matte finish to reduce glare and reflections. The panel has a full HD resolution and it supports a 144Hz refresh rate. Now, for a gaming laptop, color accuracy is definitely not the highest priority of them all. And at this price, you can't expect it to come with 100% sRGB coverage. But then again, it is pretty good enough for your gaming needs. The 6.4 millisecond motion picture response time is pretty decent for your casual gaming. Unless you really wanted something that performs better than that, you might want to consider for an external monitor. All in all, I'm very satisfied with the display itself but not to say the same for the audio entertainment system. For a laptop of this size, I'm kind of disappointed with their audio configuration. It is placed and facing directly towards the table surface and that makes the sound rather dull and soft. Honestly, I have heard better audio quality from the Zephyrus G14. They have smaller speaker configuration. However, the better placements make them sound way better than this one. Now the port decision on this laptop is kind of mixed bag for me. First of all, the good stuff. They have three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Two of them is uh, USB Type A, while another one of them is USB Type C. And it is even more ridiculous when we consider that there are three different options for you to connect to external monitors. Then the joker of all of them is the single USB 2.0. Honestly, it's 2020, why are we still holding on to the USB 2.0 ports is beyond me. And for a laptop of this take, they actually put a micro SD card reader instead of full size SD card reader. As for the keyboard, RGB fans will be delighted to find out this has a per key RGB backlit. Honestly, it doesn't really improve all your gaming experience unless you really want to use it for show-off purposes. But then again, hey, it's your money. Since they need to fit in a number pad, so they have to make some sacrifices, which means 
the key surface is slightly smaller compared to your other laptops it is not that much but if you are transitioning from other laptops back and forth let's say you have a work laptop and this one is your gaming laptop you will definitely find the slightly smaller keys to be kind of annoying fortunately the typing experience is not directly affected by it because the key travel distance and feedback is relatively good I personally don't like how the arrow cluster is blended into the rest of the keyboard you see it is placed directly beside the shift and uh, control keys and that really means that you will often press the wrong keys when you try to use arrow keys meanwhile the trackpad is for sure very usable consider that it is using Windows precision driver just that I don't like how the feel of the physical click button underneath the trackpad itself there is literally no key travel and it feels mushy to press on it then again if you are already carrying this laptop with you together with the power brick I think carrying an extra gaming mouse will actually solve the problem for you to avoid using this trackpad and now the performance of the Forge 15R now since we have previously mentioned that the laptop actually limits the maximum TDP to 65 watt yes even though you can actually put in a 3950X but then again you are not going to benefit from all the raw performance from this chip yes you do get the 16 core and 32 threads power but not at its maximum potential so with that said, do take this into a consideration when you are looking for the next CPU upgrade. Looking at the graph, the Ryzen 5 3600 actually losing out against the Ryzen 7 4800H mobile CPU. The multi-core performance is understandable as the R5 3600 only has 6 cores while the R7 4800H has 8 cores just that the single core performance from the R7 4800H is so remarkable that it makes us wonder is it worth getting the 3000 series desktop CPU or should we just wait since the 4000 series announcement is just around the corner the Samsung PM981A drive is initially running at PCIe 2x4 speed this is a problem considered that the drive and motherboard should be able to support PCIe 3x4 speeds so obviously we will have to troubleshoot this issue since the Forge 15R has two M.2 slots a simple slot swapping would be an easy task for us to troubleshoot this issue and guess what the moment we switch from slot 1 to slot 2 the speed we are getting is actually PCIe 3 by 4 speed for some reason the first slot simply refuses to run at PCIe 3 by 4 speed we have no idea what is causing it we even tried to clean the pins and the slot itself to no avail we can only guess it is either a faulty motherboard or otherwise it is actually limited in the BIOS to make it run at PCIe 2x4 we will be sure to get some response from level 51 in regards of these technical difficulties the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 is performing remarkably well on this laptop given with a better cooling solution we are getting lower GPU temperature and higher FPS compared to the tough gaming A15 speaking of the thermals we are getting pretty good numbers even though the CPU maximum temperature sometimes goes beyond 90 degrees Celsius but hey this is a desktop class CPU and to be able to control it under 100 degrees Celsius is a pretty good job done by the guys behind the design that goes without saying in order to keep the temperature low it comes at the cost of a beefier heatsink and heat pipes and no other than the noisy jet engine fans that comes with it the Forge 15R is one of the easiest laptop for users to upgrade its components the bottom chassis is secured by just five screws and the bottom lid slides off instead of having the need to pry it open the key highlight is no other than the ability to upgrade the CPU as it uses the same AM4 socket found on the desktop motherboards just that you need to take extra precaution when removing the heatsink as it's secured by a couple of different screws the dual sodium slots are easily accessible and will support up to DDR4 3200MHz RAM modules 
there are two M.2 slots available for NVMe SSDs. The top one will support both NVMe and SATA, while the other one only recognizes NVMe drives. And yes, other than the dual M.2 slots, there are still an extra 2.5 inch SATA drive bay. The battery is secured by two screws and can be easily changed if you want to. But a single full charge of the 62 watt hour battery will only last you somewhere around 60 to 90 minutes depending on what you're doing. Based on our use case, we're getting somewhere around 90 minutes by just browsing on Google Chrome and watching YouTube videos. In other words, the battery itself, for me, it feels more like an UPS instead of a battery that lets you carry the laptop around and get things done. Before we conclude this review, we must talk about the price. The level 51 Forge 15R sample we received from them comes at the retail price of 4,999 ringgit Malaysia. And of course, since level 51 actually provides customization services, so you can actually choose your own CPU, GPU, RAM configuration, and as well as the storage configuration. So the price varies according to what kind of stuff you pick into this uh, laptop. Then if we look at the price of 4,999 Ringgit Malaysia, looking at the other competitor options, for example, the closest one we can actually get is the Acer Predator Helios 300. That laptop is priced at 4,999 Ringgit as well. Obviously, the Forge 15R trumps the Helios 300. However, we can't really compare them side by side like this. Consider that the Forge 15R actually sacrifices the battery life and portability in favor of the better performance components. Then again, if we shift our focus slightly towards Eligear, which they have recently announced the Ares V, that is basically the same chassis made by the same ODM, Clevo. And yep, yeah, they are basically using the same motherboard as well. For some reason, after we configure a little bit on Eligear's website, we found out that Eligear's same configuration is about 500 ringgit more expensive than the level 51 option. We don't know what's going on with their deals with the supplier side. That's not what we are concerned for. But for consumers like you, you guys, uh, if you're looking for laptops that can actually take up a desktop class CPU, if you think that battery life and portability is not part of your requirement, for example, if your job requires you to move around all the time, a portable desktop like this one is a lot more suitable for your needs. So in this case, I would say yes, the level 51 Forge 15R is a good choice. So what do you guys think of the level 51 Forge 15R? Do you think this is a good idea? Consider that you're able to support AM4 uh, CPUs and of course if, if there is BIOS update, it could possibly able to support uh, AMD 4000 series desktop CPU. Who knows right? Or would you rather just go for something like Asus Tough Gaming uh, A15 that comes with the 4800H you get the benefit of good performance, battery life, and portability. Let us know down in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.